Jay, well, how's it going today? It's going well. The trainers are a little bit hard to control. Go, let's go! Just like that. Oh, 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 oh. Hit him in the ball. But I'm trying to find my voice and make it happen. What's going on, y'all? It is Coach PJ back with another video. And in this video, we are going to be talking about the five exercises every beginner boxer has to do. Should be mandatory, no questions asked. Add these into the arsenal, train like this, check them out. What's up, everybody? This is Flow Master. So listen, like always, every day, all day, I have no idea what the hell we doing, but you know what? I'm gonna roll with the punches because that's what boxing's all about is rolling with the punches. Oh, I can't believe we're sitting in a McDonald's parking lot because, you know, we don't eat this, so if you see the golden arches in the back, we don't eat this I lived off McDonald's, two Big Macs, super size, two large fries, and two Coke, boy. I used to go sit in front of the TV, boy, and watch Spider-Man and Superman. But I don't do that no more. I don't do that no more. Change man, change body, goddamn. <laughs> I'm in there, and then Aaron comes up and distracts me, and then someone came up and stole my food, and then the people at McDonald's yelled at me for getting my food stolen. The bike isn't really a bike, it's just a gear holder. Location's sick, dude. I want to drop in on this with my skateboard. Think that's a liability? Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> a liability. A little fight camp photo shoot. We're down here in the, the aqueducts, I think. We're just waiting for a wave to wash us away. What's up everybody? Today we're going to go over five exercises for beginner boxers. So when you're first starting out, these are the five things that you can be focusing on the most. They're pretty entry level. Anybody can do them. I'm personally going to teach you about jumping rope today. Jumping rope is one of the best things you could do as a boxer. It helps you build that sort of like collaboration between your arms and your legs. You get them both working together. It's a great warm up. It's great for coordination and rhythm and things like that. It's an awesome cardio workout. As a fighter, you usually jump rope at the beginning of a workout to warm up but then you very often also close your workouts with jump rope it's like meditation to me I used to jump rope for probably too much I used to jump rope for 20 minutes 30 minutes after a workout cool down just chill relax and yeah I highly recommend it so let's do some jump rope today before you start jumping rope I highly suggest you tie your shorts it's important you want to make sure that you don't wear boxers so you've been jumping rope for a little while, you're trying to jump rope, it's not clicking for you, you're not able to get your feet you know, into a nice little rhythm with the rope. I want you to practice just like this. You bring it around and you just catch it in your feet like that. This is like day one jump rope tutorial right here. Bring the rope around, catch it in your feet. That's going to help you sort of judge distance and teach you how to form the proper arc. Because a lot of people when they start jumping rope, they'll go too high with it and it'll catch on their feet like this. Like that, right? So they'll do something like that, or they'll go too low. And it'll hit off the ground. Form a nice arc, catch it in your feet, do it 50 times. From there, the next step, that's step one. Step two would just be to jump over it once, and then catch it in your feet like that. Do it, you know, 20 times. Jump over it once, catch it. And then once you got it down for twice, just like that, go for 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, just like that. And just relax. Don't push yourself too hard at first. You try to get the motions down. When you jump rope, one of the other keys is to stay relaxed. I see a lot of people, they start jumping rope, and they're like, as hard as they can with their hands and their feet and stuff like that, and they're jumping real high. Just chill, watch this. I barely move my hands and my arms. I can jump rope. I just keep my hands and my arms in the same place and the momentum of my body jumping is what's moving the rope. Jumping rope should be the kind of thing that's super sustainable. When you go at this nice coast pace like this, you should be able to just do it all day. That's step four. Look at these pounds. Where you at, PJ? PJ? Uh, uh. Ah! 
Bring it down, bro. Bring it down, doggy. What we getting in today, we gonna get into some jump rope, some shadow boxing, some mitt work, some dancing. So you already see me and PJ, we challenged each other. And uh, PJ lost that, but you know, it's all good. <laughs> Come on over with me, follow me. My man Tommy doing pad work with Aaron. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I taught him everything he doing back there. You know, that's, that's, that's my work. That's really my work. Tommy, you looking good, baby. You looking good. I taught you well, young man. I taught you well. Let me see a trick, PJ. Give me a trick. Let me see a willy, baby. Let me see a willy. I'm not doing that today, bro. Come on, baby. Let me see a willy, baby. What are you doing, girl? Always taking photos of yourself. So let me give y'all some tips on shadow boxing. Shadow boxing was designed to fight your shadow, but when there's no sun out here, you gotta pretend like it's an opponent that's in front of you. And the reason why a lot of boxers shadow box, because sometimes they don't have a partner where they can practice doing their punches and doing their movement. So you pretend like you have a person right in front of you, and every time you throw the jab, you wanna pretend like that person throwing something back at you, throwing something back at you. So for people who's just starting, just do nice and simple one twos and move because the problem is a lot of people like the shadow box and it seems like there is just only one ass whipping that the person who's throwing the punch is whipping the ass but really if i put another person over on the other side you wouldn't just be throwing punches like this you'd be like oh 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 so shadow boxing if you're gonna shadow box pretend like there's a person in front of you and you're sparring with that person but if you're first starting off start nice and slow and always work on your blocks and moving What's up? What's up, everybody? It's the Shaney Cam. Hello. Yeah. Can you dance to this type of music? Oh, wow. <laughs> Can I dance to this? What's wrong with you? All right, we're about to get some pad work in. I love holding mitts because it's mental fitness, too. She's got to memorize these combinations. And if she doesn't, I'm going to pop her right in the pie hole. I like hitting mitts because it's the best workout that you can get. When you're hitting the bag, you can get a really good workout in, but it's different because the bag stays in one place and you get to choose where to hit it. When you're working with a coach and doing mitt work, they control the tempo. They control what combos you're throwing. You're using your brain, you're using your body. We'll show you some basics. You always start with a jab just to find the chemistry with your partner. One, one. And the timing. One, two. And the whole time you're holding mitts, you're looking at what they're doing wrong so you can pop them in the mitts. One, two, slip, two, three, two. And it's good when you spar too because then you can start to see you get used to punches coming at your face and you get used to seeing what they're doing wrong. Right, when you're holding mitts, you don't want to meet the punches too much because then you smother her. She wants to figure out what her punch range is. So if you hold the jab out for me, she needs to know exactly how far she has to be to land this punch, right? If I overcommit to it, throw the jab again. See how she's jamming her punch. It defeats the purpose. So a lot of rookie mid holders are Meeting the punches so much, you're smothering the person, they never actually find out what their punch range is. So my job is to keep it real tight and right, close to my face. I want to simulate one head as much as I can. So a simple combination is going to be a one, two, three. I see this all the time, we go one, two, three. And they meet the punch like this, right? And it's not realistic. Because the one, two lands here, the three should land here too, and it should simulate my face. 45 degree angle. One head, not out here, and don't meet the punches too much. A couple pointers when you're hitting mitts. Breath work. When you hear somebody hitting pads, they shh, shh, shh. They make silly noises, right? Or it sounds silly to someone that doesn't quite understand. You have to control your breath work. You want to let a little bit of air out with every punch. That way you're going to last longer. You're not going to gas out. Another pointer, you have to pace yourself. You don't want to go ham, try and knock your mitt holder out with every single punch because you're only going to last a few seconds, right? And we want to be able to last three minute rounds, five minute rounds, depending on what type of fighting you're doing, what you're training for. Look at this dog behind you. Oh. Oh. Oh, we're about to go run. I mean, I'm about to run. They're going to walk and film, but... He's just gonna tell us why running is good for beginner boxers. I actually ran cross country and track in high school because my nickname was Speedy growing up, so I felt obligated to be a fast runner. I was a mediocre runner. In hindsight, I'm like, why the heck did I pick running out of all sports? I'm gonna show you something right now. Should I race him? I'm gonna teach you how to be a man, Eric. Wasn't that impressive? Hey, there it is. Running. 
by far one of the best exercises in the world. If you're a boxer, whether you're training at home, whether you're an amateur boxer, just getting into the ring or a decorated veteran or a pro, running is a huge aspect of your training. It's a huge part of how you become a better fighter, not only physically but mentally. But let's be honest, why should you run? What should you be doing or trying to accomplish in your running? Well, to be able to get faster, to be able to hit harder, to be able to punch better, you need to have the lungs and the heart to be able to push that. And one of the best ways to accomplish that is through running. Long distance, sprinting, intervals, you name it. Running period is gonna help you get to where you wanna be. Obviously inside the ring, you're gonna be moving nonstop. You're gonna be moving your head, turning your feet, moving the hips and getting to a place where you have to have that heart rate at about 80 to 90% of your max. Now, one of the better aspects about running, to me, going above and beyond what you think you can handle. A lot of times, people stop at a place where they get comfortable. They run and they feel like that's as far as I can run or that's as fast or as difficult as I can go. I wanna challenge everyone. If you're running, try to go above and beyond your goals every single week and make progress. If your mile is at a seven minute time, try to continually bump that down. Working to progressively get faster, hit harder, and be a better runner. And I guarantee you that will translate to being a better boxer. And speaking of that, I'm about to get myself a running right now. Oh yeah. Cue the Rocky music. Where's the Rocky music? <laughs> it's not even nine yet and we are having the time of our lives. I just got done doing some sprints, so I got no shame sitting down. Let's be real, you gotta recover. All of you sleep. We were wired that way. You gotta sleep, you gotta recover. We're not meant to run like robots all day long. I'm also a big proponent to naps. I don't know if you nap. If you got kids, I'm probably positive that you do nap. It's okay. Make sure whatever you're doing today, you're taking care of you. Yeah, buddy. If you're gonna take this shit seriously, you gotta be able to turn a gym into anything, anywhere. Any atmosphere you're in, that's a gym, right? Check this out, let's go. You got sprints up this right here. A medicine ball, you're just like that. Oh. Get that right. <laughs> Was that too much? <laughs> Telling you right now, watch out for him. He's on the come up. World champ right here. World champ of what? Where do you see this guy on the bike? I'm telling you right now. We're gonna cut to a clip right now of him doing some crazy sh What am I gonna drop? Huh? Alright, alright, we just finished up at location number one with Epic on our way to location number two right now. So we just got to Newport Beach. We're skating around trying to find a spot to shoot. I don't really know what the vision is. I was kind of hoping you were gonna fill me in. Basically, to be part of the Fight Camp content team, you always have to be out hunting for spots. So I spent years scouting spots and I finally found this spot right here, which we're gonna be shooting at today. I totally lied to you. I live right there. I looked out my window one day and I said, right there. That's where we're shooting. Aaron, is this the beginning of your new modeling career? I hope so, bro. I was waiting for you to ask. <laughs> I'm gonna teach you how to do the cross, just like that. Check this out. So same way that we learned how to jump the rope, I want you to do the same thing for the cross. I want you to practice just like this. You're standing there, I want you to bring it around, just like that, and try to catch it with your feet. And as you go, you wanna form a big loop that your whole body can fit through, and you cross your arms either this way or this way, whatever you prefer to start. So check me out. I'm gonna stand here, cross it, catch it in my feet. And then when you get really comfortable, with forming that nice loop and catching it in your feet in that way, then you just learn to jump through the cross. So one jump through just like this. Stop. It's gonna get a lot easier, I promise you. And that's a wrap. Let's go. Well done. Good job, everyone. Well done. What up guys, we just finished up the shoot. We just got back here to the headquarters. We're gonna go in here and handle some business and show you guys what the fifth exercise is you guys need to be doing. All right, let's roll. All right, homie, so check it out. We went over jump rope, running, shadow boxing, and pad work. 
Last but not least, we have the heavy bag. Now the heavy bag is really good for developing punching power, but also just practicing co basic combinations and moving around the bag. So I'm gonna give you two combinations to practice on your own. We always start out with the jab, because the jab sets everything up, right? So first I'm just trying to figure out exactly how far do I have to be to land that puppy with my top two knuckles, and then I pull the hand straight back to my chin on the straight line. We call that chambering. You wanna get in the habit of really pulling that hand back. Okay, your first combination is a one, two, three. The one, two lands straight ahead, the three lands slightly off the center line at 11 o'clock on the bag. So it's bang, bang, bang. Generally the last punch is the key punch. <laughs> Practice breathing as you throw. The second combination I'm gonna give you guys is a two, three, two. That's a cross to a cross. Speed, speed, power, last punch, key punch. Ta, ta, ta. Pull the hand straight back to your chin. All right, so you have two combinations now. In between, we're gonna step laterally. When you move around the bag, you never wanna cross the feet, you see? I'm always set to punch, so when I move left, the left foot leads. When I move right, the right foot leads. So we're gonna work a one, two, three, then you step around the bag, and then you work the two, three, two, and then you move around. Lastly, for my advanced boxers, you gotta add a little bit of head movement as well. You can slip, or you can roll. You wanna keep your head out of the center line on that heavy bag, you see, always. When you fight, you wanna keep your head out of the center line. So now I got two combinations of work, footwork and head movement. Let's put it all together. Here we go. All right, now let's catch your breath. What's going on in there, man? I was going ham, bro. You're like, what the All right, so those are the five exercises that every beginner boxer should practice. Thanks for hanging out with us today. We'll see you in the next video.